Last month marked the 10-year anniversary of Hurricane Katrina, and in my hometown of New Orleans, parts of the city are still working to rebuild, and some of the stories that come out of this tragedy are simply inspiring. Take a look. Before Hurricane Katrina hit, believe it or not, this was a two-story building. A movie theater that was right here and a pharmacist. They had a bunch of houses and businesses. I mean, this was home. My name is Bernal Cotlin. I'm 47. I'm the proud owner of the first grocery store in the Lower Ninth Ward since Hurricane Katrina. Free Katrina, you had 15,000 people that was here in the Lower Ninth Ward. You had businesses everywhere. It was like one big, huge family. Everybody knew everybody. Today, post Katrina, there's no infrastructure. There's, there's thousands of people that want to come back home and that can't come back home because there's no, nothing here for them to come back to. The rest of the city, you don't see no remnants of Hurricane Katrina at all. You see Mardi Gras, you see the Superdome, you see the French Quarter, the beignets, everything is good to go, except when you come to the Lower Night Ward, and the people here are still suffering. The big box stores said they're not coming back because there's not enough people. And the people that want to come back said they're not coming back because there's no stores. So it's like a, it's a vicious cycle, and somebody had to break the cycle and decide that somebody was me. What's going on, fellas? So I decided to right, right, right. open up a store. Life, this is the only grocery store. I put in my entire life savings, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and everything. But the people that saw here, they're appreciative, they're grateful. I've had people come in here and cry. I had people come and take pictures. I told the strangers, give me hugs. Generally, we stay open as long as there's a need. Because that's why we did this. We did this to help out the community. Every, every time, every time I, I think about it, even though um, I, I live here, uh, it's it's a mixture of feelings uh, that I get. Um, I, I just I just want I want I want the night ward to come back. And if I have to build the, the city back myself, one business at a time, I'm gonna do it. Bernal, come on down. You're amazing. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. That oh, so so there were no. It, it, like you said, it's a vicious cycle because no one wants to go back. There's no businesses, and if the businesses they open up and no one's there, why why did you decide to do it? Um, it started um, first of all. I was the only person. I was the first person back in my neighborhood. I didn't have any neighbors at all, and I finally had one neighbor, Miss Emmanuel, a uh, sweet sweet lady. Um, I noticed she used to catch the the bus a lot, but one particular time uh, she came up with a cab. And I was out cutting the grass, and I, uh, I noticed when she opened up the trunk of her car, uh, of, the, of the cab, she was bringing in groceries. So I put my lawnmower up, and I went in and I talked to her, and she said, Bernal, you didn't know they didn't have a grocery store in the night board. And it, it didn't dawn on me. So I drove up and down the lower night board, and I talked to several people, and I found out we didn't have any infrastructure at all in the lower night ward. Um, a few people told me they have to catch three city buses just to get a loaf of bread or a gallon of milk to feed your family. That's an undue hardship. This is 2015. Yeah. Something had to change, and, and so I think that somebody was me to make the change. And, well, it, you did it. I mean, it, I'm sure everyone felt that, but no one was doing anything about it. And then you used all of your money to open up the store, but it's not just, I think it's kind of like, like, what do you sell in there? It's better question is what we don't sell. Yeah, yeah. I have a little bitty small sign in my store, and that sign simply reads, if you don't see it, ask for it. Uh -huh. And people ask for everything from uh, a hair weave to clothes to, to all kinds of issues. Are you giving hair <laughs> weaves at your grocery store? I sell everything. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Let's go to Jeannie, who is there with some of your friends. Oh! <laughs> Wait, I have a question. Hey, Jeannie? I, I yes. have a, ask ask uh, who there has uh, gotten a weave from the store so far. <laughs> we got a weave from the store. All right, here we go. All right. I don't need no weave, Ellen. All right. Woo! <laughs> All right, so I understand there's something more that you want to add to that. 
About two weeks ago, Ellen, a guy came to my store. He had two big, huge garbage bags, and he put them at the front of the door. He came and he bought two items. He bought a laundry detergent and a Coca-Cola, and he picked those garbage bags up and walked across the street to the bus stop. So I walked across the street and I introduced myself and I asked him what he was doing. He bent down, opened up the bags. It was full of dirty clothes, and he said he was in search for a laundry room. So I started um, a GoFundMe page, and I told him, I said, give me a little while. If I raise up enough money, I'm going to open up the first laundry room in the Lower Night Ward. You, I mean, you're, you're amazing. OK, well, we want to help you get that started. So we are uh, giving you three washers, three dryers. You just have to find the place for it. But <laughs> there's three washers and three dryers that will be going into your store. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Ellen, right. thank you so much, man. <laughs> All right. I want to talk to you a little bit more. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back with Burnell after this. We are back with Burnell Colton, and uh, he is the owner of the first grocery store in the Lower Ninth Ward since Hurricane Katrina, and hopefully somebody watching in that area uh, joins in and helps Burnell with uh, with building the area back up. And uh, uh, just quickly, Lily, happy birthday. Your son is like, I can't be with her today, but happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you're welcome, Lily. You have a you, you raised a, a, a great son. He's an amazing man. Uh, so you're also you started doing home deliveries for people who can't make it to the store. There are quite a few people Ellen, in the night ward that's elderly um, or just can't get out because of undue hardships. So I have an old, older truck. It's in the hospital now. That, when I say I drove that truck back and forth, uh -huh. <laughs> uh, making deliveries. But um, I talked to the mechanic. He said the radiator was uh, busted, uh, the batteries. I told him to stop naming the stuff. It was just Yeah, much. yeah. So, <laughs> so you're not making deliveries right now? No, I'm Well, safe, you're going to you're going to make deliveries real soon because uh, we're going to give you a brand new Ford. Look. <laughs> oh no. Check it in. Check it in. Yes. <laughs> Let me tell you about the car. <laughs> uh, with the C-Max Energy, you'll be able to load groceries in the back easily with a hands-free foot-activated lift gate. Ford has a whole line of plug-in hybrids and electric cars, which make driving more affordable and efficient. And this is your car, and you're an amazing man. And hopefully, like I said, anyone in the area that you can help out, uh, help build that area back up and help Burnell out, because he, he can't do it alone, but he's doing a lot. I want to thank Jesse Tyler Ferguson, Eric Stone Street, Ed Oxenbold. Have a, and a special thanks to satisfy for giving Burnell the washers and dryers to the store. I'll see you tomorrow. Be kind to one another. Bye.